Hello and welcome back. My name is Adrian Cherry and this is the second in a series of guides about using QCAD for drawing up artwork for etching. In the first one I covered the general setup of the page and the layers that we're using. On this we'll get to use some of the drawing tools and show you how I've used it. Drawing tools always start from this panel on the left hand side and for the railways it's tend to start with a rail head as a reference line. So because it's a reference line, on the right hand side here I've got my layer selected as naught. I use this as a construction line. And basically whenever you're doing the drawing, whatever you draw will be placed on the layer that is highlighted on the right hand side. You can change it later on because in the properties there's the layer and so you can swap the between layers if you get I quite often put it on the wrong layer and have to move it afterwards. Anyway, we'll start off with a construction line, which is the railhead. On here, again, you hover over and there's letters after all of the options. So WL, in this highlight, is a keyboard shortcut. So once you get used to it, rather than having to ferret around the menus, you can just type in on the keyboard if it's easier. So we've got line tools, circles, ellipses, arcs, text, all sorts. When we select one, so we want to draw a straight line, it takes us to another set of options, which is defining what sort of line we want to draw. At the top there's a back arrow, so we can always go back to the top level. So this is this right top level, so on the circles, we've got all the circle options, uh, ellipses, we've got various options for ellipses, etc but back to the line tool. The lines are actually drawn from point, so as it says a horizontal line, so the dot is a reference point, so you can have two straight line between two reference points, one reference point and an angle, horizontal, vertical, rectangles, um, parallel lines, etc. So what, what is the reference point? Well, we select, say we're going towards to two points. That then takes us down to another level. Again, we can go back by clicking on the back arrow, but two points there. And this defines all the reference points. Now, we haven't got any other lines drawn at the minute, so we can't really use any of these options further down, which are related to the line. Um, there is the grid there, so we can actually draw two points on the grid. Now, unfortunately, it all automatically selects the best option. So if you've not got nothing selected, it will pick the best option that it can. So because we haven't got any lines drawn, when we move the cursor onto the paper, you can see a set of crosshairs up to the ruler at the top. So you can see exactly where it's going. So 10 inches in, um, 10 inches down is that good point there. And you can see in the paler colour, it has actually got a little text to the bottom right of the cursor that says grid. So that's going to tell you it's going to snap to the grid point. So even though the cursor isn't quite on the grid point, you can see I can move it away slightly, move it back, and the crosshairs don't move. That's because it's going to put the reference point on the nearest grid point. So you can see it jumps from one grid point to the next as I move the cursor around. This is useful later on because you can actually get it to snap to the end points of lines or midpoints of lines. So anyway, we'll draw a rail head. We'll just do it on grid for the minute. And so I'll start off at zero, zero, reference point, And I'll just draw a line straight over here. So you can see here that it's going up to six foot. Now I can either zoom out and go further across or and this is the, how I started to use it a lot more. So and you can see down at the bottom, it's got a little uh, graphic telling you what the next instruction is. So when you go into more complex instructions, this changes. So we define in the next point. So a left mouse button will define the next point. A right mouse button will say you've done. And down here, it's giving you all the dimensions of the current cursor. So you can see as I move around, that is moving around. Now, the beauty of QCAD, 
and I'm sure it's available in other ones, but this is simple to find. So if I actually press the space bar, you can see now that it's highlighted the command line at the bottom. It's put a box around there and the flashing icon. So the next point I can define. So I can actually define a length. So if I say, and I'm working, remember I'm working in inches. So if I do 5,5, you can see that the, that didn't, uh, go back to 5,5, 5, 5,5, five, 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 if I move the cursor it's going to move. So you can see the line, obviously at 45 degrees, because I've gone 5 inches in and 5 inches up. And it's always, that is always um, an absolute position. So if I wanted to draw the line over to 30 foot, then Again, it's X and Y, so I can do um, 30 foot, so what's that, 30, 360 inches, comma, naught. And you can see I've got a horizontal line now that's going to be 360 inches. That's fine for this because I'm actually at zero, zero. So the absolute point and the reference point um, are the same. If you want, so, well... I've drawn that in, if I hit enter, you can now see that if you can now see that it's actually drawn, if I zoom zoom out, and again I'm I'm on a I'm using an Apple laptop, so the touchpad I can zoom like on an iPad by just moving it's a multi-touch thing, so you might have to use the zoom tools if you're using different system. So you can see I've got my line but I'm, I can draw more points rather than just a single line. So a right click will define the next point. So if for the next point, again, if I hit enter, if I type in five comma five again, you can see it's taken the line back to almost the origin because it's an absolute position, not a relative position. If I wanted to draw a vertical line from the current point, the key to that is using the ampersand. So if I use ampersand at the front, that's a relative position. So the last point is the one on the right. So if I say ampersand zero, so no more X, but 12 Y, you can see now that from the last point, it's gone zero inches in the x direction and plus 12 inches in the y direction. Obviously I can do minus two foot if I wanted. So I can literally type in the dimensions relative to the last point if I wanted to. This is just going to be a single line, so rather than that, um, I'll just right click um, and it snaps out and leaves the line. So that's the first line. Go on to more complex drawings in the next episode, I think.